Pavel Strezoletsky. Sir Pavel Edmund Strezoletsky KCMG CBFRSFRGS, Polish pronunciation, June 24, 1797, October 6, 1873, also known as Paul Edmund de Strezoletsky, was a Polish explorer and geologist who in 1845 also became a British subject. He is noted for his contributions to the exploration of Australia, particularly the Snowy Mountains and Tasmania as well as climbing and naming the highest mountain on the continent, Mount Kosciuszka, 2,228 meters. Early Years Strezoletsky was born in 1797, in Glosh near Posen, Kingdom of Prussia, today called Glesina, a suburb of Poznan, Poland, the third child of Franciszek Strezoletsky, a Polish nobleman, Slaszczyk, leasing land, and his wife, Anna Razinska. In Australia, Strezoletsky was called a count, though there is no proof that he actually approved or used such a title himself. Strezoletsky served shortly in the Prussian army in the 6th Regiment of Thuringiska Newlands, at the time known as the Polish Regiment because the majority of the staff were Poles. Strezoletsky submitted his resignation due to the strict Prussian doctrine that he did not approve of. There are some suggestions that he deserted the regiment but in the official history of the regiment the name Strezoletsky does not appear. Not long after, he became a tutor at the manor of local nobility. He fell in love with his young student, a girl of 15, Adina Turno, but was rejected as a suitor by her father, Adam Turno. There are stories that Strezoletsky attempted unsuccessfully to elope with Adina, but biographers find this unlikely. Adina and Strezoletsky exchanged letters over 40 years but they never married. Strezoletsky, provided with funds by his family, traveled in Austria and Italy. He eventually came under the notice of Prince Sapieha, who placed him in charge of a large estate in the Russian-occupied part of Poland. Strezoletsky was then about 26 years of age and carried out his duties very successfully. Some years later the prince died, and a dispute arose between his son and heir, Eustace, and Strezoletsky. Eustace refused to pay Strezoletsky the prince's bequest, a huge sum of money and a considerable estate accusing him of bad faith and prevarication. After four years the dispute was settled. Strezoletsky left Poland about 1829 and stayed some time in France, from where he traveled to Africa. On June 8, 1834, he sailed from Liverpool to New York. He traveled widely in North and South America, Cuba, Tahiti and the South Sea Islands, and went to New Zealand probably about the beginning of 1839. Australia He arrived at Sydney on April 25, 1839. He visited the estate of his friend James MacArthur at Camden. He wrote about meeting the German vintners that the MacArthurs had brought to Australia from the Rheingau region. He wrote, I had gone with my host to look at the farm, the fields, and the vineyard, contiguous to which last stood in a row six neat cottages, surrounded with kitchen gardens, and inhabited by six families of German vine dressers, who emigrated two years ago to New South Wales, either driven there by necessity, or seduced by the hope of finding, beyond the sea, fortune peace, and happiness, dash perhaps justice and liberty. The German salutation which I gave to the group that stood nearest, was like some signal bell, which instantly set the whole colony in motion. Fathers, mothers, and children came running from all sides to see, to salute, and to talk to the gentlemen who came from Germany. They took me for their fellow countrymen, and were happy, questioning me about Germany, the Rhine, and their native town. I was far from undeceiving them. At the request of the Governor of New South Wales, Sir George Gibbs, he made a geological and mineralogical survey of the Gippsland region in present-day eastern Victoria, where he made many discoveries. He discovered gold in 1839, but Gibbs feared the effects of gold on the colony and persuaded Strezoletsky to keep his discovery secret. Later in 1839 Strezoletsky set out on an expedition into the Australian Alps and explored the snowy mountains with James MacArthur, James Riley and two Aboriginal guides, Charlie Tara and Jackie. In 1840 he climbed the highest peak on mainland Australia and named it Mount Kosciuszka, to honor Tadeusz Kosciuszka, one of the national heroes of Poland and a hero of the American Revolutionary War. Dot on Victorian maps, but never on New South Wales maps, the name Mount Kosciuszko was erroneously connected to the neighboring peak, at present known as Mount Townsend and causing later many confusions, including the recent incorrect information on swapping the names of the mountains. From there Strezoletsky made a journey through Gippsland. After passing the Latrobe River it was found necessary to abandon the horses and all the specimens that had been collected and try to reach Western Port. For 22 days they were on the edge of starvation and were ultimately saved by the knowledge and hunting ability of their guide Charlie, who caught native animals for them to eat. The party, practically exhausted, 
arrived at Western Port on May 12, 1840 and reached Melbourne on 28 May. The Strzelecki Ranges are named in his honor. From 1840 to 1842, based in Lounston, Tasmania, then known as Van Diemen's Land, Strzelecki explored nearly every part of the island, usually on foot with three men and two pack horses. The Lieutenant Governor, Sir John Franklin, and his wife, Lady Jane, afforded him every help in his scientific endeavors. Strzelecki left Tasmania on September 29, 1842 by steamer and arrived in Sydney on 2 October. He was collecting specimens in northern New South Wales towards the end of that year, and on April 22, 1843, he left Sydney after having travelled 11,000 kilometres 7, miles, through New South Wales, Victoria, and Tasmania, examining the geology along the way. He went to England after visiting China, the East Indies and Egypt. In 1845 he published his physical description of New South Wales and Van Diemen's Land which was awarded the Gold Medal of the Royal Geographical Society in May 1846. In 1845 he became a naturalized British subject. Europe Towards the end of 1846, the Great Irish Famine was underway and the British Relief Association formed with the sum of £500,000 subscribed for the relief of the sufferers. Strzelecki was appointed an agent of the association to superintend the distribution of supplies in County Sligo, County Mayo, and County Donegal. He devoted himself to his task with success, though he was for a time incapacitated by famine fever. In 1847 and 1848 he continued his work in Dublin as sole agent for the association. In recognition of his services, he was made a Companion of the Order of the Bath CB, in November 1848. He helped impoverished Irish families to seek new lives in Australia. It has been estimated that the various works in which he was involved saved 200,000 Irish lives. There is a commemorative plaque dedicated to him on Sackville Place, Dublin. He was also active in helping injured soldiers during the Crimean War, being personally acquainted with Florence Nightingale. Strzelecki arrived back to London in 1849 where he was made a Fellow of the Royal Geographical Society and was awarded its gold medal for exploration in the southeastern portion of Australia. The Society still displays his huge geological map of New South Wales and Tasmania for public viewing. He was also made a Fellow of the Royal Society, having gained widespread recognition as an explorer as well as a philanthropist. Strzelecki died of liver cancer in London in 1873 and was buried in Kensal Green Cemetery. In 1997 his remains were transferred to the Crypt of Merit at the Church of St. Adalbert in his hometown of Poznan, Poland. Awards and Honours He was awarded an honorary degree from the University of Oxford, appointed a Companion of the Order of the Bath CB, and knighted as a Knight Commander of the Order of St. Michael and St. George KCMG, in 1869. In 1983 he was honoured on a postage stamp depicting his portrait issued by Australia Post. Eponyms in Australia. In Canada. Writing, 